One of the key concepts in public health is called shifting the curve. This curve represents the normal distribution of behaviors or symptoms in a population. Most behaviors and symptoms occur on a continuum. The number of behaviors or symptoms increases as you move from left to right. At some point, we define the condition as a disease or disorder. The basic idea of shifting the curve is that a small increase in exposure can result in a large increase in the percent of people with a disease or disorder. We can use a study about ADHD to show how this works. The study we will use was published by Tanya Froelich in Pediatrics in 2009. ADHD is a brain disorder. The prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that makes us most distinctly human, is smaller in children who have this condition. A typical child who has ADHD is impulsive, hyperactive, or has problems paying attention. They may be forgetful and often have learning problems. To qualify for a diagnosis, a child's symptoms have to be severe. A typical child has one ADHD symptom, whereas the child with ADHD has about 15 symptoms. ADHD affects about 9% of children. This curve looks at the total population of children, but some children, like those who are exposed to lead, are at higher risk for ADHD. Lead is found everywhere, but some children are at higher risk for lead exposure, like children who are exposed to lead in older housing or plumbing. Lead damages brain cells and alters neurotransmitters like dopamine in the prefrontal cortex, the same area responsible for ADHD. A child who has lower lead exposure typically exhibits one ADHD symptom. In contrast, a child who has higher lead exposure exhibits three symptoms. This shift in ADHD symptoms is subtle for an individual child, but it results in a large increase in the percent of children who meet the threshold for ADHD. This increase, from 5 to 13 percent, is equivalent to 600,000 more children in the United States having this condition. This shows how a small increase in lead exposure shifts the curve and results in a large increase in the percent of children with ADHD. Let's look at another exposure, tobacco. Tobacco smoke is comprised of over 7,000 chemicals, including carcinogens and toxins that affect the brain. If a child is exposed to these toxins during pregnancy, they are at higher risk to develop ADHD. About 19% of pregnant women in the United States smoked tobacco during pregnancy when this study was done. The typical unexposed child from this subgroup has two ADHD symptoms. In contrast, the tobacco-exposed child has four symptoms. This subtle shift in ADHD symptoms results in a large increase in the percent of children who have ADHD. The increase from 7 to 16% is equivalent to 500,000 more children having ADHD. Sometimes risk factors act independently. In other cases, like with lead and tobacco, they can magnify the impact of each other. This is called the synergistic effect. A child who has low lead exposure and wasn't exposed to tobacco typically exhibits one ADHD symptom. In contrast, a child who has higher lead exposure and was exposed to tobacco exhibits six symptoms. Four percent of children who have neither exposure have ADHD whereas 24% of children with both exposures have ADHD. This shift in ADHD symptoms results in a greater than six-fold increase in the percent of children who have ADHD, an increase that is far greater than if you simply added the two risk factors together. This shows how exposures to lead and tobacco, which result in subtle shifts in ADHD behaviors, can lead to a large increase in the percent of ADHD. The good news is that this means that we can prevent about 1 million cases of ADHD in U.S. children if we are willing to make the necessary investments.